Whew, I thought the first half of May was crazy with sneaker releases, but the second half is even crazier. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is Sit or Sell. Before we dive into things though, I do want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Rakuten. Rakuten is the largest cashback site which partners with over 3,500 of the largest brands, for example like Nike, Adidas, New Balance, Target, and Walmart to bring you coupon codes, promotions, and more. And of course, they do that all for free. Which means that for just about every single sneaker release that we talk about in today's video, you can get cash back by buying it through Rakuten. Shop with Rakuten this week during their Big Give Week promotion to get up to 15% cash back at your favorite store. Stores. Sign up for Rakuten through the link in the top of the description below and get a $40 sign up bonus with your first qualifying purchase. And seriously, that's $40 of free money just for making a qualifying purchase with Rakuten. On stuff you are probably already going to buy. Like for me, I buy a lot of sneakers, I use Rakuten to get cash back on my sneakers, I seriously buy a lot of sneakers, and because of that I get a decent amount of cash back. So there are a lot of great ways to use Rakuten like the app or the Chrome extension, but I usually just go directly to their website and then type in the name of the store that I'm looking for. So in this case I'm trying to grab some Adidas Ultra Boost. So let me type in Adidas, and it looks like right now they're giving 15% cash back on Adidas. So now that I'm at Adidas's website, I can grab the products that I want and I'm good to go. Seriously, if you're not using Rakuten, you're leaving money on the table. It's free cash back. And once again, if you want to check out Rakuten for yourself, make sure to sign up through the link in the top of the description. And with your first qualifying purchase, you get $40 cash back. Once again, huge thank you to Rakuten for sponsoring today's video. Now back to Sit or Sell. So starting things off on May 17th, we've got the Nike Air More Uptempo in white and midnight navy. So this shoe is kind of par for the course when it comes to Nike Air More Uptempos. It's kind of more of the same. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing out there. But at the same time, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a classic sneaker. And being able to grab this shoe in a clean, almost triple wide colorway is definitely something that I think a lot of people will be excited about. Now, with that being said, is this shoe going to be incredibly hyped? Is this something that's going to sell out immediately? Probably not. And because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Next up, also dropping on the 17th, we've got the Nike Air Force One High, Thunder Blue, and Pink Prime. So according to the sneakers app, this shoe is kind of a rain boot, which is a weird way to sell a pair of Air Force Ones, but apparently that's the case. In fact, the starting line of the sneakers app, or the starting line of the description in the sneakers app, is forget the umbrella. The original high flyer lets you take high fashion into summer showers. So apparently this is a waterproof, or at least water resistant, Nike Air Force One High. And I guess the colorway is somewhat inspired by rain boots. You've got bright blues, you've got pinks, and you've got some tans all around. It's not a bad looking sneaker, and uh, it's kind of an interesting interpretation of the Nike Air Force One High. But even though the shoe will probably draw the attention of passers by when you're wearing this sneaker, it probably won't draw the attention of sneaker buyers, and for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then finally, finishing off May 17th, we've got the Nike Dunk High in Championship White and Red. Why did they switch around the naming like that? It's usually the Nike Dunk, Championship Red and White. Is this red not championship worthy? I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Regardless, it's a nice looking pair of Nike Dunk Highs. I love red. Red has always been my favorite color. Blue has been a close second for a long time, but red has always been the one for me. And because of that, this Nike Dunk High is a sneaker that I would love to grab. But then again, my luck with the sneakers app is garbage. So my chances of getting this shoe are probably pretty slim. Regardless, it's a clean sneaker and I definitely think this shoe will sell out. Moving on to May 18th, we've got the restock of the Jound New Balance 990 V3. Well, it's not really a restock, it's a wider release on New Balance's website rather than on Jound's website, but based on the speed that this shoe sold out on Jound's website, I'm expecting there not to be a lot of stock and also there to be a huge amount of demand. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to Jound New Balance collaborations, these shoes tend to sell for a lot of money on the resale market, so if you don't grab them for retail, you're gonna have to pay a lot of money to actually be able to wear a pair of these. That being said, I think this newer release of this sneaker is probably gonna be one of the least popular popular because in my opinion, this colorway is kind of the weakest. It's not a bad look, it's just like an all dark brown sneaker and there's been so many dark brown 990 V3s and you can barely even tell what this sneaker is and I think an element to having a Jown collaboration is you know, knowing that you have a Jown collaboration. So because of that, I don't think the shoe is going to be the most popular Jown New Balance, but at the same time, it's still a Jown New Balance and again, based on the first release of the Jown New Balances, this sneaker will absolutely sell out. Continuing on to May 19th, we've got the Nike Air Max 1 Light Matter Root Worn Blue. What's a Matter Root? I have no idea. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys know what it is. I have no clue. I'm assuming when it comes to the colors on this shoe, maybe it's the pinks or the tans or, or the greens. I think it's anything except for the blue because the blue is the worn blue. Um, I have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, regardless of which color it is on the shoe, this sneaker is actually pretty clean. And if I ever see a Matter Root, it's probably a good looking root. 
<laughs> That's a weird thing to say. So this is more of a standard Nike Air Max One. It's nothing crazy. It's not a collaboration. It's just a clean suede Nike Air Max One that comes in tonal pinks and blues and tans. And it's actually a very clean sneaker for summer. Now the good news is if you're looking to grab a pair of these, while they might not be in every single Foot Locker, they should be pretty widely available. And I don't think these are gonna sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. After that, also dropping on the 19th, we've got the Nike Offline Pack in Ocean Cube Sand Drift. So I don't totally get the concept behind the Offline Pack. I think it's Nike trying to push people to go camping more and go outside and disconnect a little bit more, but the sneakers themselves don't really look like camping sneakers. I mean, I guess they look like sleeping bags, but they don't really look like something I would wear to go hiking or to go camping in. And for some reason, because these sneakers are so weird and so different, and I'm assuming the stock is so low, they have tended to sell out in the past. However, I think we've gotten to a point now where five or six colorways in, people are kind of over it. And because of that, I just don't see this weird sleeping bag looking sneaker selling out. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like a bad sneaker. It's just not something I would ever wear. And because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Then finally finishing off the 19th, we've got the return of a classic with the Nike LeBron 9 Low LeBron Old Palmer. Well, apparently now it's called the White Lime and Bright Mango because I'm sure they're trying to avoid a lawsuit with the name. And what's interesting about this retro of a classic Nike LeBron sneaker is that when this sneaker first released, it was incredibly popular and people wanted to grab it and it resold. But now, a couple years later, it's just not doing the same. I think Nike basketball just isn't selling the way that it used to. And we've seen this recently with other classic Nike LeBrons that have retro, like the Galaxies, which used to sell for a bunch. Now they're barely reselling at all. And I think these are shoes that, while they might sell through pretty well, they're probably not gonna sell out. And you should be able to find these at at least boutique stores like Atmos and Lapsin and Hammer. Maybe not every single Foot Locker, but you should be able to find these pretty readily. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Continuing on to May 20th, we've got two different colorways dropping of the Mason Margiela Reebok Question Mid, Memory Of. So this shoe is sort of Mason Margiela's deconstructed take on the Reebok Question Mid. And it's actually not the only sneaker dropping in this collection. I didn't want to cover all of them because there's a bunch. It's the only one that I think people will really be that excited for. And it drops in two different colorways. You've got an all white and an all black. And to be fair, while I'm not a huge fan of designer shoes, I am definitely coming around, and this is one pretty clean look. And I mean, shoot, as an Iverson fan, I, I actually kind of feel like I need this. That being said, this shoe retails for $400, which is way more than I'm willing to spend on it, and because of that, I'm gonna be letting these go. However, I do think there's people out there who will probably grab these. I mean, let's be honest, this deconstructed look is actually pretty clean, and the Reebok Question Mid is already a pretty clean sneaker as well. And I mean, if we're going off of Sneaker News' heat meter, it's got a 4.14 flames out of five, which is actually pretty high, not not only for Reeboks, but for really any sneaker. So I don't know, maybe people will be hyped on this shoe. I have no idea. I do have to say though, because the shoe costs $400 in both the white and the black colorway, I do think the market's gonna be a lot smaller than it would have been if the shoe cost maybe like 300 or 250. It's a Mason Margiela shoe, so they probably would never charge that for this sneaker. Regardless, I think it's a cool shoe, but I just don't see this shoe selling out. Also dropping on the 20th, we've got the Nike Air Trainer 1 Chlorophyll. So the timing of this release is pretty interesting because as you'll see later on in the video, we've also got the Travis Scott Air Trainer 1s dropping. So I'm sure they're trying to play off of the hype of that sneaker a little bit with this release. I'm not a huge Air Trainer 1 fan, but I do have to admit that this colorway, this white, gray, black, and green colorway is actually really clean. Now, usually I would say that this sneaker is probably not gonna sell out. And you know what? Honestly, I'm probably gonna stick to that. However, because we've got the Travis's dropping a couple weeks later, I think there could be a little bit more hype than usual for this release. Now again, I don't think these are gonna sell out. Maybe if they released right after the Travis Scott's, that would have a little bit more hype on them than I think that they will. But regardless, it's a clean shoe, and if you like them, go ahead and grab them. You can't go wrong, they're only 120 bucks. It's not a bad pickup. And as you can probably tell, I think these sneakers are going to sit. Continuing on, on the same day, we've got the Nike KD14 Ron English 3. So Ron English is a pretty well-known sculptor and artist, and this is actually his third collaboration on a KD sneaker. That's why it's called the Ron English 3. And honestly, I kind of dig this sneaker. I haven't grabbed any pairs of KD14s. It's just not a shoe that I really felt like I needed, but I love the sort of sculpted strap that's going across the top of the shoe that kind of looks like a wing. It reminds me a lot of the, uh, was it the KD8? The KD8 um, Ant Pearls that had like the angel wings kind of across the top. I love that sneaker for a lot of different reasons, but the angel wings were one of them. And this sneaker reminds me of that a lot, and I love the shape of the strap. It is definitely a departure, at least from what I know of Ron English, of his art style. He usually does like famous pop culture characters with like skull faces on them, so it's a little bit different than I think anything else he usually does. I do think it's a clean sneaker, and I think there is definitely an audience for it. That being said, with all of his previous collaborations, at least with KDs, I haven't seen them sell out. And because of that, I don't think this Ron English 3 colorway is gonna sell out. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit, although it is fire. 
Also dropping on the 20th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Next Nature Arctic Orange. So I can't really tell if the Next Nature line is made up of recycled materials or if it's made for camping or what the deal behind it is. It does kind of seem like the Next Nature Dunks use primarily textiles on the upper rather than leathers, although this shoe does have leather on the upper, which I guess is fine. Uh, I prefer leather dunks, but that's just me. And I've got to say that the colorway of this shoe, this sort of like light salmon pink mixed with greens and blues, like the Air Max ones that we talked about earlier, is actually pretty clean. I'll probably go for this shoe on the Nike sneakers app like I do for almost every Nike dunk, and I will definitely miss out, as I do with every Nike dunk. Um, and because of that, uh, I mean, I have to give this shoe a sell because if I can't grab it on the sneakers app or in store, it's sold out. <laughs> And then finally, finishing off the 20th, we've got the Clot Air Jordan 5 Low SP. So if you're familiar with Clot at all, it's an imprint started by Edison Chen, and it's heavily inspired by ancient Chinese culture. And because of that, this shoe features jade accents throughout the sneaker that apparently tie into some sort of ancient Chinese custom. The upper of the shoe comes primarily in black satin, accented by red laces and red details, as well as what could be a glow-in-the-dark outsole. Now, it doesn't really look like this shoe is dropping on the sneakers app, at least not right now. It seems to be starting to release only at local boutiques, which I guess it's a good thing if you live in a city with one of those local sneaker boutiques like Bodega or Atmos or Lapstone and Hammer. Well, I guess Atmos isn't really a local sneaker boutique. It is in the US, but not in Japan, really. Regardless, it's a clean sneaker, and because it's a Clot Air Jordan collaboration, I definitely see this Air Jordan 5 low selling out. Moving on to May 21st, we've got the Air Jordan 4 White and Black. So the name really says it all with this sneaker. This is a white and black Air Jordan 4. It does have some grays in there, so maybe it should have been called the white, gray, and black Air Jordan. I don't know. Regardless, it's a clean sneaker. I like it a lot. I dig white and black Air Jordan 4s. Air Jordan 4s are as popular now as they have ever been, and I definitely think, even though this is probably a general release, it's definitely a sneaker that I think a lot of people will be going for, and it's a classic retro Air Jordan 4. It's not a retro colorway, but the sneaker itself is a retro. I don't know. It's a cool looking sneaker. A lot of people are going to like it, and even though it's a GR, it's probably going to sell out. Also dropping on May 21st, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Slate Carbon. So as we've come to expect from Kanye West and Adidas, the brand new Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Compact Slate Carbon looks a lot like a lot of the other Yeezy compacts. I mean, very, very similar. The sneaker comes in a primarily black look. You've got a black midsole and outsole and a mostly black knit upper. However, it does feature some sort of tannish, pinkish accents towards the midfoot of the shoe. The Yeezy Compact is a sneaker that I felt like had a lot of potential, but because it was kind of ugly, it, it didn't hit its full potential. It's by far the most comfortable pair of knit Yeezys that I've ever worn, and it's a shoe that I think a lot more people should be into. However, because it looks the way it does on the top of the shoe, I don't know, I just don't think it's that appealing. But regardless, because it's not that widely available of a Yeezy sneaker, and it is still technically a Yeezy 350 V2, I do see this sneaker probably selling out. And then the final pair of sneakers dropping on the 21st is actually a very colorful pair of Yeezys, which doesn't happen much. That's the Adidas Yeezy 700 V3 in Fade Carbon. This shoe seems completely out of left field for Yeezy, which is crazy because Yeezy has dropped some crazy, crazy sneakers. Now this shoe is your standard Yeezy 700 V3, at least in construction and probably materials. However, the colorway of this shoe is crazy. It actually fades from sort of a carbon blue on the front of the shoe all the way to a purple and then to a pink on the heel of the shoe. And what's interesting that doesn't just take place on the upper of the shoe on the knit material it also sort of falls over onto the heel of the sneaker in sort of this pink paint and you know what I've been asking for color from Yeezy sneakers for a very long time and they delivered this is a shoe that I think a lot of people are gonna be into because it's actually a colorful and crazy looking pair of Adidas Yeezys. The 700 V3 is not the most popular pair of V3s, however, this colorway might change that. I mean, maybe not everyone loves this sneaker, but I think some people will be drawn to the fact that this sneaker is cool looking. I like it, it looks like a spectrum or a rainbow or something. It's fire. Now, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to buy this shoe just because I don't need any more sneakers in my life. It's stupid to say when I run a sneaker channel, but it's the truth. However, I think it's a good looking sneaker. I'm happy that Kanye and Adidas decided to do this and uh, if I can get a pair to review I probably will maybe I'll give it away I don't know actually speaking of giveaways if you guys have not yet entered my Union LA Air Jordan 2 giveaway what are you doing it's super easy to enter all you need to do is hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed and then sign up for the apothecary email list which is linked in the description below that's literally all there is to it and uh, yeah it's a cool pair of sneakers and I'll buy it in your size so there you go Nice little uh, bonus for watching the channel. Thank you guys for watching the channel, by the way. I appreciate it. Oh, and I guess I should give the Fade Carbons a sitter sell rating. I think it's a great sneaker. I think this shoe is probably going to sell. 
Then on May 23rd, we've got three different Rui Hachimara Jordan brand collaborations, starting out with the Rui Hachimara Jordan Series SE Black Samurai. So Rui Hachimara is one of Jordan brand's latest NBA athletes, and now they're finally giving him not signature shoes, but some special collaborations which all look pretty fire. Like I mentioned, the first shoe is the Jordan Series SE. Now I think this shoe will be the least popular out of the three that are dropping. It comes in black, accented by reds and tans, which are all inspired by Rui Hachimara's Japanese heritage. Now unfortunately even though the Jordan series sneaker is a pretty good looking shoe and I think it could be good for day to day lifestyle wear, the silhouette itself has never been that popular and because of that, really no matter what the collaboration, I think this shoe is probably going to sit on shelves. Next up is the Air Jordan 36 Black Samurai. This shoe will be the performance model of the three sneakers releasing. It's the latest Jordan brand model, the Air Jordan 36. And like with the Jordan Series SE, the sneaker comes draped in this beautiful tan upper. Personally, my favorite details on the sneaker are the red hits around the midsole of the shoe. I think they look incredible. I actually really like the way that the Air Jordan 36 looks. And out of all of the Air Jordan 36s that we've seen so far, this one is probably my favorite. I think the suede details on the top of the shoe are fire. But again, just like with the Jordan SE, I think this Air Jordan 36 is probably going to sit because it's a performance model. And even though it's a more limited performance model, it's still an Air Jordan 36. So because of that, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then the final shoe dropping from this collaboration is the Rui Hachimara Air Jordan 8 Black Samurai. Now this shoe is crazy fire, and I know the Air Jordan 8 is one of the least popular retro Air Jordan models, but in this tan colorway with these red accents, you can't really beat it. This is probably one of my favorite Air Jordan 8s that I've ever released. I mean, seriously, look at this shoe. It's crazy. I love the details on this sneaker. I love the tan color that they used. Again, I love those hits of red, and uh, it just makes this Air Jordan 8 pop. Like, this is a super clean sneaker. It's great for lifestyle wear. You probably wouldn't ball in this shoe. You'd probably grab the 36s if you're trying to play basketball, but this sneaker, man, Whew, it's crazy, and it will absolutely be very hyped up. And because of that, even with the slightly inflated $225 price point, I definitely think this shoe will sell out. And then finally, rounding off May 23rd, we've got the potential release of two different off-white Nike Air Force One mids. So the reason I say potential release is because this release has not yet been confirmed. However, it is being reported by some sneaker news sites like Sneaker News. And uh, I mean, off-white sneakers do tend to drop kind of randomly. So these off-white Air Force One mids come in two different colorways, a white and a black, and they seem pretty different than any of the previous off-white Air Force Ones. I mean, obviously this collaboration takes place on the mid silhouette and not the low silhouette, but regardless, Regardless, the shoes themselves look completely different. It seems like the entire upper of the shoe is made in either some sort of knit material or fabric material. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And they don't feature any of those sort of deconstructed details. It just seems like a completely remade Nike Air Force One. Also, and might I say, unfortunately, both of these colorways do feature those track running spikes that we found on some of the uh, less popular off-white models. I know there are good reasons for doing that because it fits with uh, whatever Virgil's concept was for this collection. However, I think in terms of wearability, it does make these sneakers not as easy to rock as a pair of off-white Air Jordan sneakers or off-white Nike sneakers that feature a standard outsole. Now, other than the details that we've already mentioned, you do have a double lacing system, which is pretty standard for off-white collaborations, and you also feature the Nike swoosh with that nice little orange hit on the heel. And I think overall, these shoes do look good, but I don't think they're gonna be some of the most popular off-white sneaker collaborations. However, they are still off-white sneaker collaborations. They're taking place on a very popular model, the Nike Air Force One Mid, and I do think that both of these colorways will sell out whenever they end up releasing, hopefully on the 23rd, but I don't know for sure. Moving on to May 24th, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Element in light curry and sail. So the Air Jordan 1 Elements are winterized and Gore-Tex covered versions of the Air Jordan 1s. And what's nice about these sneakers is that unlike other winterized Jordan models, these shoes do look very similar to their standard counterparts. And I have to say in this curry and light sail colorway, this shoe looks a lot like the Shattered Backboard 2.0s. And because of that, I do think there's some hype behind this sneaker. Obviously, it won't be as much hype as you would usually have on a standard Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard release, but I do think this shoe will be relatively popular and I think a lot of people are excited about it even though the Air Jordan 1 is not as popular as it was a year or two ago. And honestly this might be a good shoe to sit on till fall because it comes in a great fall colorway. It also is winterized so if it starts raining you should be good in this sneaker. And I think overall it's a good look and I think this shoe will definitely sell out. 
And then rounding off May 24th, we've got a collection of sneakers that I'm incredibly excited for, and that's the new collection of Salehi Benbury Crocs. So Salehi's latest collection comes in three different colorways. You've got Urchin, which is sort of a light blue. You've got Stratus, which is a white, and you've got Crocodile, which is a neon green. And let me tell you, I would be happy with any of these colorways. I think I prefer the Urchin colorway, but hey, if I can grab any of them, I'll be stoked. I do already have the dark green colorway from the previous release. Unfortunately, I grabbed it in a size nine and not a size eight. I didn't realize that the sizing was that different. So if I can grab any of these shoes, I will be grabbing them in a full size down and I will rock the crap out of them because I love them. In fact, this might be a resale pickup for me because I, I really need at least one of these colorways. They are all so fire. It's definitely a collection that I wanna grab and I love all three of these colorways. And if you're not into Crocs yet, at least try them out. They're definitely worth trying out. The same thing as the foam runners. I love the foam runners. I get that they're crazy looking, but until you try them out, don't talk to me about them. You don't understand it. You don't understand the comfort and the looks that you get wearing these shoes. Whether you like the looks or not, it's fun. It's still fun. I'm a huge Salehi Bembury fan. He's absolutely killing it, and I cannot wait for this collection. And as we saw with the previous Salehi Crocs collaboration, I think all three of these colorways will sell out and sell out instantly. Continuing on to May 25th, we've got one release, and that's the Air Jordan 1 Heritage. I actually reviewed this shoe about a month ago because this shoe released, I think, overseas like two months ago, so it was super easy to grab. And what's crazy is that the resale price of this shoe has plummeted. It's nuts. You can grab this shoe for pretty much retail, and it hasn't even dropped in the US yet. I'm not gonna give you guys my full thoughts on this sneaker because I already did a full review of this shoe, and if you guys wanna watch that, there will be a link somewhere, or just search it on YouTube, and you should be able to find it. But it's definitely a clean sneaker. It's rooted in some pretty cool Jordan brand history, and I like the color blocking. It's not my favorite, but I do like the way the shoe looks. And even though there isn't much of an aftermarket for this sneaker, I still think there's a lot of people out there who just want to rock this shoe. And because of that, I definitely think that the Air Jordan 1 High Heritages, or Heritage, Air Jordan 1 Heritage, it doesn't matter. I think this shoe is going to sell out. <laughs> then moving on to May 26th, we've got the wider release of the Union LA Air Jordan 2s in the Gray Fog colorway. Now, I forgot this shoe was releasing on this day, otherwise I would have told you guys about the giveaway now rather than earlier on in the video. But again, if you guys wanna enter the giveaway for this shoe in your size, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel and then sign up for the Apothecary email list, which is linked down below. But this shoe is fire and out of the two colorways that dropped, even though the rattan colorway was more limited and only available through Union's website, I actually still prefer the gray colorway. I think it's cleaner and easier to rock, at least in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with the rattan colorway, but I'm glad this one's the more available one because this one's the one that I prefer and uh, I think more people should have a chance to grab this sneaker. Now, I'm not sure exactly where this shoe is re-releasing. It could be on the sneakers app. It could be through Union again. I'm not sure. I just know that Union tweeted that this shoe is re-releasing on the 26th. So if you're interested in grabbing this shoe, stay tuned to their release information. They will let you know. But uh, it's an awesome shoe, and if you can grab it for retail, it's worth it. And if you can't, resale is not that crazy. And I would say grab it sooner than later because the resale price will probably go up eventually. And obviously, because this shoe is so hyped up and because it's so clean, I definitely think the Gray Fogs will will sell out. Then continuing on to May 27th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Regal Pink. So at first I thought this shoe was a women's colorway because it came in like this actually really nice lavender colorway, but apparently it's releasing in full family sizing. Now this shoe actually reminds me a lot of the upcoming DJ Khaled collection, and maybe that's why they're dropping it to give you a, a more GR version of that collection if you miss out on that collection, but I actually kind of dig it. I like the light pinks. I love the fact that the outsole comes in teal and apparently it's glow in the dark. We don't get a lot of glow in the dark Air Jordan 5s, and that makes this shoe even more special. I love it. And I mean, I don't have that much to say about this sneaker. It's sort of a, a light lavender or a pink colored Air Jordan 5. It's a colorway we don't get a lot of, especially on Air Jordan 5s. And I think if you like this colorway, rock the hell out of it. It's very clean. I might even grab a pair for myself because you don't see a lot of these. And even though a lot of people might not think that they can rock these, I do think there's going to be enough demand for this sneaker out there. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. Continuing on with the 27th, we've got four heavy hitters dropping. We've got four different Travis Scott Nike collaborations. And the first are two different colorways of the Travis Scott Nike Air Trainer ones. And the two colorways that are dropping are the Coriander colorway, which comes in tonal browns, and the Gray Haze colorway, which comes in grays, tans, and greens. And both colorways apparently feature a removable shroud. Not sure why, but they do. Now both of these shoes seem to be covered in denim or some kind of canvas material. Like I said, they're both kind of tonal takes on each of their colorways. The brown colorway comes with very dark browns around the heel of the shoe and then sort of fades to very light tans around the toe. And it also features Cactus Jack Corporation branding throughout the shoe. The gray haze colorway is similar in that it features tonal grays. However, it does feature some more color options. You've got tans throughout the sneaker and then green branding, which I actually really dig. And if I had to pick one of these two sneakers to rock, it would probably be the gray hazes. I'm not a giant fan of either of these shoes. I do kind of like the zipper stash pocket on the heel. I think that's kind of a funny touch, but uh, they're both not sneakers that I really feel like I need. That being said though, I'm sure there's 
there's a lot of people out there who would sweat it and who are definitely going for this shoe. And for that reason, I'm giving both of these colorways a sell. And then finally, finishing off the 27th with two more Travis collaborations, we've got two colorways of the Travis Scott Air Max 1s. The two colorways that are dropping are the Baroque Brown colorway, which comes in this really nice tan and brown look, and the Saturn Gold colorway, which comes in sort of a tonal tan and gold color. I think it's obvious, but the shoe that's going to be by far the most popular out of all four dropping on the 27th is the Baroque Brown Air Max 1s, and that's because the colorway is the cleanest, it's on probably the most popular silhouette, and it's the shoe that we've seen the most times. I think Travis has worn this shoe more than any of the other shoes, and it's just a good looking pair of Air Max 1s. I mean, there's just something about that backwards Nike swoosh. Nike doesn't usually let people do that. They've let, I think, just LeBron up until Travis Scott do that, and he was the only person who could do it. They haven't really let anyone flip their branding because when you look at brand guidelines, usually it says you're not supposed to flip the logo backwards. And so I think that's some of the appeal of the shoe. Obviously, the main draw is the fact that it's a collaboration with Travis Scott. And I think the main idea behind this collection or collaboration is that these shoes are supposed to look utilitarian and they should be able to be used for hiking and going on the trail and camping and things like that. And while I think most people who buy these shoes won't do anything close to that in these sneakers, it does give the shoes a cool and unique look. And I know I said the Baroque Brown colorway will definitely be the most popular of all the colorways that are dropping on this day. I think the Saturn Golds will still be very popular and both of these shoes will absolutely sell out. And then finally, rounding off the video for today, releasing on May 28th, we've got the return of the Air Jordan 5 Green Beam. So this shoe originally released back in 2006 and for a long time was one of the least popular Air Jordan 5 colorways. But for some reason over the last decade or so, people really grew to love this sneaker. They were mad that they missed out on the original release of this shoe and Jordan Brand noticed that and now is re-releasing this shoe in 2022. And while I've never been a huge Green Bean fan myself, I love the food, but the shoes I can kind of take or leave. The upper of the shoe is very clean with a tonal gray look accented by green shark teeth. It's simple, it's clean, and I think that's why a lot of people like it. And again, if we go off of the heat meter on Sneaker News' website, I don't usually use this as a meter of judging whether a sneaker is going to sit or sell or not, but the shoe does have 4.5 flames out of 5, and I think 400 and something people have actually voted that. And I think that's actually a lot more than usual. So that, plus the fact that a lot of people are actually excited about this shoe, I definitely think that the Air Jordan 5 Green Beans will sell out. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on these releases and which shoes you're looking forward to most. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Once again, huge thank you to Rakuten for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to check them out and save money on your sneaker purchases, make sure to click the link in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.